Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I, I know it's a little late. Uh, we were expecting a little earlier, maybe. Uh, okay, firstly, let me tell I'm not a great orator. You know, I'm a director, very shy, actually, uh, to speak. Uh, but nevertheless, I think you all are a special audience. You all are from uh, mass media and future art filmmakers, directors, you know. So, I think it will be fun to share my experiences with you. Uh, while I believe we can actually start by, say, a Q&A question and answer, but um, maybe I'll give you a little brief about uh, my stint and how I came into uh, filmmaking. And post that, then we can quickly get into question answers, and that might be a good way of, you know, knowing a little more uh, about media and film and my experiences. Now, <clears throat> with me, what happened? I was a graduate from electronics from Delhi, and then while I was trying to pursue further in electronics, I happened to one day visit office of TV18 in Delhi. So, and it was like this small one cabin outside written with metal TV18, I still remember. And you go in and then there are stairs that go down. And then you go down and then there are further stairs that go down. And then suddenly these doors open and you go further down. So it was all in the basement. And then suddenly on right you see there's a big reception and on right there's half a kilometer office right under the floor. Now that struck me. I said, man, what is this place? <laughs> and I saw all youngsters carrying camera on their shoulders and running around. And I realized they all are correspondents you know, who are making news. So that day it struck me that this is one profession which actually has a voice. Where you are working and people can see your work. You know, they can get moved by your work. That's the power that media has. And that became my motivating force to actually drop electronics and start to pursue uh, media journalism. And I joined there after, say, around eight months of banging my head, trying all my resources to enter this field. And I managed as a correspondent. So I started my career as a correspondent in TV18. Great environment. I still is. TV18 is still bustling and they have diversified into a lot of things, including Viacom now films also. So I was into investigative uh, journalism and then into more of as a correspondent doing investigative stories. And around that time, I figured and my bosses also figured that I might be a little good in fiction. So they were also handling some work for MTV. Bombay at that time and soon I was plugged into that and I started directing for MTV also. While I was doing MTV, the company was also doing some serials etc. But serials somehow didn't catch my fancy. Uh, it is around that time somebody from Bombay had come and they were saying, man, TV18 office, bang in front of them, there's this company called Crest Communication. And what those guys speak, we don't understand only, you know, the jargons they use, you know. So Crest at that time was one of the largest VFX house of the country, which was making all special effects art films like Lux and Fair and Lovely, Six Faces, high-end VFX work. So VFX was something that I felt that I'm attracted to and I applied in Crest. They called me to Bombay for a round of interview. It's funny, I still remember, uh, I was, I, my, when I came for the interview, they said, okay, so how much are you getting there? And I'm talking about a good 15 years back or so. So I said, um, I'm getting 15K, 15,000 is what I'm getting. And, you know, so they said, okay, so you really want to be in ad films? I said, yeah, totally, you know. So they said, okay, we can give you 1,500 bucks. <laughs> That's all we have for you. I said, excuse me, but means why, why is this so? Is it because you're not equipped with that knowledge. We have an opening for an intern over here. You know, we don't need any high-flyer director. 
we already have our directors and you don't even know the city so the opening is only for a trainee and if you are willing for a 1500 job then maybe we can look into it maybe so now that was a big decision coming to a new city with 1500 bucks job you can't even tell your parents that you know and i'd never been to bombay also frankly so i thought about it and i decided this is the place that i have to be because i have to learn this special effects and I have to be into our own scenario. So as the story generally goes about, you know, with you all people also who are very strong headed and that's why you are into film, media, you know. So the call was taken that, okay, fine, I'll, I'm going to come to Bombay. Now, coming to taking a decision, fighting at home, standing up for taking up a new kind of a job is one thing, but then actually putting your head into it and then facing the outcome is a different ball game altogether so now the story went was that all that was looking rosy suddenly was, seemed to be very dark because when you have a budget of 1500 which i negotiated with them to 2250 minus the tax tds you know i had to now make a budget and all that things. But I think it is the sheer drive that you want to learn and you want to be at a good place is that kept me afloat. Uh, I won't go into a lot of details where all I have stayed and been to sustain uh, the first six months. But they were great experiences. And I hope you all don't come across those experiences because they were great in the sense, quite painful. But in those six months, I understood the city. I also understood people. I also got a decorum, you know, because I was always, always hobnobbing with uh, the cream guys. But when you are starting at a low position, then you come across the spot boys who mistreat you, who when you are trying to get a tea, will not give you tea. You will have to hunt those guys and request them for tea three times, four times and then you'll get that tea. So, I am saying the passion in you has to be so high that you can take shit from a spot boy and then you can come to any level that you want. So, if you are thinking that the place that you are heading for is a comfy place and there will be cameras over there and you will get to direct in another two years means you have to have very lucky stars for that guys frankly you have to know that next five years is gonna be a toil it happens quite opposite log MBA karte hain uske baad life set hai yahan pe aap course karoge aur uske baad upset hogi life so get ready for that getting upset because you are going to get into the real world from here on. The cutthroat competition, there are no jobs over there. You will have to make your ways by hook and crook. You have to be passionate, you have to be honest, and you also have to be talented. Above all, you have to have a very high level of perseverance. You know, you have to have patience, a lot of patience. Things don't happen here in one year or one and a half year. One one thing takes three, three years. So it can go that bad. But depending on what level you want to play yourself, it will be your, your waiting time. If you want to be an actor, actor's struggle is the hardest of the struggle. You know, uh, because the recognition is only for a handful of people. So automatically the struggle level is going to be very high. People from all across the states are coming here, jamming up. Uh, you have to make space in those people. Similarly, after that then comes for director. There are a lot of people who want to be director because uh, say if it's a film then everything depends on the director. The name comes of the director, though it's a teamwork. Everybody wants to have that name of good or bad to themselves. So you have to get ready. To, you, you can't think that I've done the course so the, the things will be very easy after this. I will get a placement and you know. Even if you get a placement then it's not necessary that you might come up very easily. So firstly you all need to know that do you have actually that talent? 
and you guys are lucky that you all have a, such a fabulous course that you all can read. 10 years, 12 years down the line, there weren't courses like this. You know, we guys couldn't go and even if we wanted to find besides FTII, we had no other courses which were credible enough to get us jobs. You have your degrees with you. So you, when you go to an office, you say, okay, I have a degree from KJ you know, we, you know, We didn't have this luxury with us. Once you go and you join whatever place you go, you need to have a very strong drive. There will be people who are going to help you push out of the job. The people that you are seeing on the top are the, are the survivors. They are the people who survived this battle, this khon kharaba that happens that you all don't know right now. It's all under the layers. So what I mean to say is that you guys have to be really, really ready for, for the battle after getting your degrees over here because there are far more equipped people and with very strong drives sitting and waiting for you all to take you all head on. We can start with the Q&A kind of a thing, if sir. anybody's got a question. Sure, sir. Yeah. yeah. Like, I would like to know, what should a director know while deciding to make a film? Like, as we have music department, production, editing, special effects, and many more in filmmaking. Is a director expected to know each and everything about a film? That comes later, actually. Firstly, if you want to be a director, you should have a story to tell. You should have a strong urge of saying something, of telling a story that you are moved with. You know, unless you don't have a story to tell, nothing will fall together. Because if you don't have that drive and that urge to express yourself out, you know, how will you convince the 200 other people to work in your frequency? So firstly, you need to know, you need to have that brilliant idea and that drive to tell that idea to the world in your way, in your way. Everything else then falls together. People start believing in you. Even if you are not having a degree, people will believe in you. Now, if you have a degree, people will believe a little more on you. But your idea has to be excellent. And then everything falls together. Your excellent idea is going to attract the producer. Your excellent idea is going to attract the editor. It's going to attract an actor. And Pico, you'll be a director. I actually wanted you to start with this, so you really made an excellent start because what happens is that today is, uh, what we are observing is that the youth is generally getting attracted to this field, looking at its glamour, you know, you think, they think that, yeah, uh, you get into it and it's all very rosy and uh, then when you go into it, so it's so nice that uh, you have given them a very clear picture and an idea, you know, that you have to work hard and definitely it has to be passion if you have to survive and go through all those uh, difficult times and you have to go uh, begin from the scratch. Uh, but I just wanted to ask you that currently, we, uh, like you said, that you have to have a very strong story and you should be able to put it across well. Uh, but we have seen some real good stories falling apart and I want to know uh, what my reading was that it fell apart because the director could not understand uh, how to put it across. Because what happens is that you have a strong story, you have a sense of how you want to put it across. But then whether the uh, audience is able to get it, you know, some of the stories which we saw were good stories but very put in a very complicated way and it did not get across to the audience. So that knack, how do you get it? Okay. Now direction is also an art. It's like if you are a painter, similarly, so you get a canvas and when it's a painter means he might, the painter might be amongst you and he looks just as ordinary. But when you put a brush in his hand and you put a canvas to him, he'll paint something so beautiful that you all will stand and you will start to appreciate that. Similarly, in this creative field, director also is the kind of a painter. He has to assimilate a lot of faculties together and then achieve what is there in his mind. Sometimes not everybody is equipped with that. That does not mean that one should not try. You will have to give it a shot. You know, if you feel that you have a story to tell, you will have to only discover it. That do, am I good enough for that or no? So it is going to be your first film that will dictate that are you capable of it or no? Can I have some silence, guys? Okay, thank you.
So the idea is that if you want to try something, you will have to go till the end. Through the chain, you have to come up and you have to come up with that story where you can direct that story and then you will know that you are a director or no. In this process, there are a lot of directors who are not actually directors who make up a story and it doesn't work. Now, having said that, sometimes it's not necessary that the film is a hit. That's because it's a teamwork. People think it's a director's film, but they don't know that director is controlled by producer and producer is controlled by financer. You know? And financer can have any kind of a mindset. He can be coming from Jaipur or from you know any other Timbuktu place. So eventually a director has to do what the producer dictates him to do till he's not become a celebrity. And this is going to apply to any of you who's going into may be a correspondent, a journalist, you may be an ad filmmaker. Ad filmmaker will be dependent on agency, agency will be dependent on that client and that client can also be from Timbuktu. So eventually we all are dependent on Timbuktu's. Now if you are lucky enough, you might find somebody sensible who might, the whole chain might fall together for you to make a sensible product. So it's a very intangible product that you are dealing in. So you have to understand that even if you are talented, you might fail. And let me tell you, failure is one of the best things that, that can happen to you. Because failure gives you a grounding. Even if you flunk in one of your classes, the next class, you won't flunk in the same class. Maybe you'll flunk in the next class. But in the <laughs> same class, you will ensure that you get through that. Because it then teaches you the essence and the value of what you are learning. And then that becomes a part of you. And then you, you actually know that how to study so that you don't keep flunking next. Same stands for a filmmaker or for anybody for that matter. Once you fail, you don't make that mistake again. You make new mistakes. So even the failures are a part of your growth. So never shy away from your failures. Take them as a sport and especially when you are coming into your professional field, failures are very important. The person who's only riding on success, it's just blue. Nobody gets that. <laughs> okay. So that's good. It's like asking speed mileage kitna de thi hai. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the film was made in 2.25 crore, including actors' cost, and it has made till now around 40 crore. So the producers are happy, <laughs> they are the ones who make money. The creative guys, they get just one time fee and then they just live on their names and come and give lectures. <laughs> so how was your experience for making Ek Chalish Ki Last Look? Experience was, yeah, it was more like a surreal thing, you know, because I had not made a film before this. And every day when you go on a set and there are 200 people who are around you waiting and looking at you that what will be the next shot. So you have to fix up the next shot. You know, so where will the camera be and what will be the lens and and what are they going to talk about you and what is going to come out of it is all a suspense. So it was a surreal moment, but it was exhilarating. I'll say. And especially if when your film works, then everything falls together. Uh, but the idea is, we, we tr I try to enjoy the moment that at least I'm sitting on the chair today after the struggle of seven, eight years, you know, and I'm sitting here and I'm saying, okay, action. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you, when I, the first film I actually wrote was not Ek Chalis Ki Last Local, not anybody that way knows. It was a big budgeted film called Dwant. Now, that was an action film and all. Now, when I was trying to, after I was working with Kundan Shah and like, he's a guru figure to me. So, uh, so, 
I was trying to pitch that film Dwan to some heroes and I was trying to sort it and it was not happening. So I shared it with my guru. I said, Kundanji, it's, it's not happening. I've spent a year and monies are all depleting. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna be a pack up. So he said, dude, you write a small, small budgeted, high concept film. Make a, write a story in such a manner which will make a producer sleepless. Means he should feel that, wow man, this is, this is the story. I want to make this story. And when he's sleepless, he will then ask you that, I want to make this film with somebody else. Because he doesn't want to give you a break. He doesn't want to take risk with your money. And that's the time when you will say, sorry sir, I will go to somebody else. And then he'll call you back. Okay, chal, thik hai mitra. And that's exactly what happened eventually with me. So that set me upon writing this new script, Ek Chalis Ki Las Local, which was a little inspired the initial incidents from my own life. And that's how it happens with most of the creative people. They look into their own lives and then they recreate it in the best cinematic manner. And that's how the, their first films, generally, they, they are different. So, so once I've written, I had written Ek Chalis, then they, I must have narrated it to at least 90 producers. There must have been like 95 in the city. <laughs> Everybody was saying, super, brilliant. Kya baat hai? Do tin ne to mere title bhi register kara liya, pina mujhe bata hai. But nobody was put, ready to put money on it. So the idea was that to find that man. And truly, for every idea that you guys have, there is a man sitting in the city who is ready to, ready to put money. You just have to have patience to find that man. He is there, he is waiting for that money, he is excited. Kab aayega mera banda? Lekin wo banda teen saal bhi laga sakta hai. To pitch myself and to, you know, find that man who will eventually produce this film. So, when, by the time I had narrated it to 90 people, the film was at my back of the hand. Means you would say, slap me and I would start narrating the film. It was like that. So when I was sitting and I was directing the film, that's the answer to your question. I felt I've already directed the film because it was running in my mind. I had seen those shots so many times and the whole ambience that I just have to say ki barish dalo, hawa dalo, patte uchalo, ladke, aisa kaam kar, cut, done, <laughs> ho gaya. It was as. But the logistics have their own way. Hamari film beach mein ruk gai. Malab, almost for a year, the film was stalled. We were, Abhay started two films in between. Nehar did one film in between. Apni film aage nahi bad rahi hai. Kyunki jo rushes aaya hai, wo itne exotic hai, ajeev se hai. The producers don't, don't know, they are not confident if the film actually is being made correctly or not. So, the film was stalled. And this was one of the most torturous moments for me, because I thought I can make a film and people are thinking that maybe I can't make a film. And there can't be nothing, there can't be anything more than depressing than this, that with all the conviction of eight, nine years, you've come to this point and every, you know, the key people are thinking maybe you can't make a film. And you don't have much choice. You have to just sit in corner and wait for the right time while there's a discussion that are going on behind your back. People are talking what to do, okay, show the film, the rush cut to the, you know, it's like interval has happened, we've not shot further ahead. But it's the film that saved me. So people who came and who saw the film, they said, means what we are seeing of the film, only this guy can complete this film. Means the people even who are approached to say that, would you like to complete this film? They said, no, we would not like to touch this film. Because it is so strange. The film, the whole phenomena happening is so strange that the person who's initiated this might be the right person to complete this. And eventually, six months or eight months down the line, they called me back and they said, why don't you finish this film? And that's how actually Ek Chalis Ki Las Local completed. I wanted to uh, take, uh, get your take on this new age cinema, what is currently going on. You know, a lot of these small budget and very realistic kind of films. 
many of them coming because like you said your film 2.5 crores and earning 40 crores so that attracts many people to do it you know they think that yes this is a good uh, business or whatever i don't know so many of them feeling few of them doing very well but they are the the ones doing good are really good films they are informative they're good for the youth to learn so what's your take on this trend taking place and another trend what we are observing like you an electronics engineer we, some months back we had this masan director who's also an engineer and an mba so a lot of these very highly qualified people leaving uh, that and taking a big challenge and a big risk into uh, this field because there there's a lot of stability here you know it's quite a struggle like you mentioned okay uh firstly i believe that talent is not restricted to what courses anybody does one may be an engineer one may be an mba or maybe a mass comm student you can be a person talented enough to churn out a story that can bring tears and laughter to people's eyes so i may be from a background of electronics but i am as good as you guys because my heart was always in mass media and in entertainment and making telling stories so uh, irrespective of whoever was guided wherever by their parents to do whatever their parents wanted eventually a, a man finds his his home what he wants to do i am happy that you guys are have at least realized it and you are doing the courses you know or the course that you that you see your future in we didn't have that privilege and that's why we bounced i wish i was in your shoes i wouldn't have gone for doing electronics i would have joined straight kg somaya this course so that i apologize i apologize sorry sk somaya sorry so i wish i had sk somaya you know and yeah. Yeah. yeah i wish i had sk somaya you know and i could have joined that would have saved so many years of mine you know instead of reading cos theta and sin theta you know i would have been doing what you all are and listening to interesting people yeah so now coming to what ma'am said about the new age uh, cinema you all are lucky that you are in in a scenario where the cinema is changing we are getting into a silver age of indian cinema till now we were like chichi babas and <laughs> akshay making fun but now even akshay has tuned himself to like a special chabez and an airlift airlift yeah. so the cinema is changing uh, it is becoming a place for thinkers and not just for setup makers so you have a great opportunity now if you have an interesting story and if a film like masan can do well there's a recognition there so you don't need to have a story with a superstar you know to get yourself a recognition or your thoughts a respect that you deserve you need to have just a a burning desire to put for yourself put your story forward and there are people who are ready to buy it and make a film on it and invest in your thoughts so bottom line your thoughts have to be so focused and so burning that it should it should burn the other person as well so that he takes out money from his pocket and says let's make this film for you yeah. so it's a changing cinema trend we are entering into a good phase you have good stories you will find buyers that's not the scene that was there 10 years back we had to like rush to 90 producers in a span of 3 years of unemployment and then find one today if you will you have a good story you will find a good producer within a year you yeah. know so that's it for the filmmakers any other question good so i can move then or somebody else okay how difficult is the comeback thing like you made one movie you are done with it now there are expectations coming up so we've seen people who do not go for the next thing or maybe do not of the mainstream thing that much so how difficult is the comeback thing well comeback is always for the focus minds and for the winners and if you want to be a winner you will have to give yourself a shot for comeback 
people who give it up on their single loss are not the people who uh, eventually are standing at the place that everybody else wants to be. Uh, may it be Mahesh Bhatt, may it be any director, or for that matter in various fields, may it be journalism, may it be ad films, there is a level of failure. But all of them have again stood back against the criticism. People have stood back and they've proved that they can do it again. So, uh, it's not easy. It, one failure takes you back at least two to three years. So, you invest another two, three years. So, making it six years and then you come back again. But you don't do the same mistakes again. That is what you have to take care. You can do new mistakes. That's okay. But don't repeat your same mistakes. And chances are, when you come back after your three, four, five years, whatever it is, you will have a product which will be a winner. Because now you can see the world in the light that you could never see the first time when you were making. You know. So, a comeback is important. I, I am also doing a comeback. My second film didn't do well. There are various reasons for that. For that, we'll have one more session. <laughs> But idea is that if you are passionate enough, you will come back again and you will do new mistakes. And sometimes you may not do mis those mistakes and you might have a success. So idea is if, the, if you are passionate enough, you will rise, you will surface and people will recognize you. We have run out of time. Superb. Okay. <laughs> Helps me. Thank you so for investing your time with us and we are grateful to have you. Thank you so much. You were so lovely audience. And yeah, of course, if anybody has any questions later on, you can always Twitter me on whatever the hashtag I think they have with them. So, uh, you know, we can always be connected. And I really hope and I wish you all very well in your advent in the coming years. And God bless you all. You all are bright. And may you achieve the great heights that you deserve.